Disaster recovery, business continuity, high availability. These are all terms you'll be getting very familiar with as a systems administrator, as they all describe minimizing and even eliminating the impact that a disaster may have on our systems and our data. Let's take a closer look. Disasters occur more frequently than you might imagine, and they usually occur at the worst times, like on your day off, or when you're out to lunch, or when you're taking a nap in your office. They don't wait for us, unfortunately, they just happen. And a fun fact, did you know about 75% of organizations experience an outage every year? And only 13% of those are weather or natural disaster related. And believe it or not, most of these disasters are caused by users. And as sysadmins, we fall into that category by oftentimes pushing the wrong button, running the wrong process, or deleting the wrong thing. So our number one defense against disastrous events, some of the more common ones we have listed here and there, is not to prevent them, because that's impossible, but to be prepared for them by having a plan and process in place so when it does happen, we can get our systems online as soon as possible. That is a process known as disaster preparedness. So the general workflow for coming up with a disaster preparedness plan looks something like this. Number one, we need to identify the critical systems required to run our business. We're talking about anything that contains data and anything that people use. Things such as our database server and all the data within, our web servers and our application servers. Next up, we need to create disaster recovery plans. And you'll have a few of these. You'll have one for your backup processes. You'll have one for your recovery processes. And you'll have one that just contains general guidelines for what to do when the shit hits the fan. And by the way, backing up is the process of taking a copy of your systems, their configurations and all the data on them and storing them on a hard disk. Another common practice is to store them on a tape drive and ship that tape drive off site because if we just stick with the disk method, chances are that disk is in the same data center as our servers. And what happens if a major disaster occurs, like a natural disaster or a meteor hits our data center? That backup is going to be no good. So it's good to store our data in multiple locations. And the cloud is also a great place for this. Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, they provide really cheap storage services that make it easy to store copies of our data offsite. Recovery, on the other hand, is the process of taking a backup and applying it onto our systems to get them back into the state that they were in when that backup was taken. And by the way, your disaster recovery plan will also take into account how often you perform backups on a system-by-system -system basis. That could be anywhere from minutes to hours to days to weeks to months, depending on the system, how critical it is, and how much data is flowing into it. Another big piece of this puzzle is thoroughly testing out your disaster recovery plan. This will include testing out those backup and recovery processes and even simulating a disaster in your development or testing environments. That's what they're there for because there's nothing worse than having an invalid backup or something wrong with these processes when it's crunch time and a disaster occurs. Finally, it's important to reevaluate your disaster recovery plan every three to six months, sooner for larger companies. And that's because our environments change, systems change, users change, data changes, and we may need to alter our plan and our processes to keep up with those changes. One more thing I want to mention here to give you a sneak peek at the advanced side of disaster recovery is that buzz term I mentioned earlier called high availability, or HA for short. This is something that enterprise level organizations implement in order to reduce or even eliminate downtime completely. It's accomplished by creating a cluster of identical machines where one of those machines is online serving our users and our customers and the other ones are offline waiting in the wings for something to happen to our online machine. And by the way, these machines are usually geographically separated in separate data centers as well to prevent that scenario where a meteor hits our data center and wipes out the whole cluster. Now, if something were to happen to this machine that's online, one of these other machines in the cluster will assume responsibilities, come online, and all that happens within seconds, a process known as automatic failover. All the while, our users have no idea what's going on in the background because it all happens automatically. The most they'll see is a little blip in the network while this switchover takes place. So that's high availability and that's some of the cool stuff you'll be playing with down the road if you stick with the systems administration field. Now you can see why disaster recovery is so important. It's so important that I used inappropriate language in this nugget and I'm sorry for that. It slipped. But honestly, disaster recovery 
is part of our job description. It's built right into it. And we really need to protect our system so we're not swimming in all of that stuff. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.